In this video, we're going to start by editing a few of the table and chair symbols. Then we will adjust their attribute settings and create sheet layer viewports to present our project. There will be several steps in this video where we will modify textures. If you do not have RenderWorks, you can skip these steps. Let's start by changing the fill color of the presentation seating chairs. In the resource browser, locate the chair for symbol used for the presentation seating layout. Right-click or control-click on the symbol and choose Edit 3D Component. In the Edit Symbol view, switch to a right isometric view, zoom in on the chair, and render in OpenGL. Select the back of the chair. If you look at the Attributes palette, you will see the fill color shows an icon over the color. This indicates that the object is using class attributes. So to change the color, we will need to edit the class. If you look in the Object Info palette, you will see the extrude for the back of the chair is in the Furnishings-Chair-Cloth class. Go to the Tools menu and choose Organization. Switch to the Classes tab and locate the Furnishings-Chair-Cloth class. Select the class and click the Edit button. Set the fill color to a dark blue and click OK. Click OK again to exit the organization dialog. You'll see that both the back of the chair and the seat of the chair are now using the dark blue color. Now select the frame of the chair. Again, this object is using a class fill color. As you can see, the frame is in the furnishings-chair-metal class. We will leave the black fill color for this class, but if you have render works, let's edit the texture. Open the organization dialog again and edit this class. Click on the Other tab, enable the Texture Surface Hatch option, choose the VS BLK Gloss Texture, and click OK. Click OK again to exit the organization dialog. Click Exit Symbol. Let's take a look at the changes. Switch to a left rear isometric view, zoom in on the Paris Ballroom, and render in OpenGL. Now let's go ahead and rename this symbol. Right-click on the Chair 4 symbol again in the Resource Browser and choose Rename. Rename the symbol Presentation Seating Chair and click OK. Next, we will edit the Classroom Seating Table and Chair symbol. We will then place a border around the front of the table. In the Navigation palette, set the Seating-Presentation class to Invisible and the Seating-Classroom class to Visible. Locate the Classroom Seating Symbol in the Resource Browser. It will have a tan table and three chairs. Edit the 3D component of this symbol. In the Symbol view, switch to a right isometric view and render an OpenGL. Let's start with the chairs. Double-click on one of the chair symbols. Choose 3D Component and click Edit. Render in OpenGL. Select the seat and the back of the chair. If you look in the Object Info palette, you will see that the objects are in the same class as the other chair. However, they are not showing the dark blue fill color. If you look in the Attributes palette, you will see why. The objects are not set to use class attributes. First, if you have RenderWorks, in the Render tab of the Object Info palette, set the texture to Class Texture. Now, in the Attributes palette, Click on the Fill Color box and choose Color by Class. The seat and the back now show with the dark blue color from the Furnishings-Chair-Cloth class. If you select the frame, you will see it is already using the correct class fill color. Go ahead and click the Exit Symbol button. Now check the Object Info palette to see the current name for this chair symbol. Now locate that symbol in the Resource Browser and rename it to Classroom Seating Chair. Now let's edit the table. Double-click on the table symbol, choose 3D Component, and click Edit, and then render in OpenGL. Again, you will see this object is not set to use class attributes. Check the Object Info palette to see what class the table is assigned. It is in the Furnishings-Table-Cloth class. Open the Organization dialog and edit this class. Set the fill color to Cool Gray 90% and click OK. Click OK again to exit the organization dialog. 
If you have RenderWorks, set the texture to Class Texture in the Render tab of the Object Info palette. Now in the Attributes palette, set the Fill Color to Color by Class. Now let's add a black border around the front of the table. Switch to a Top Plan view. Activate the Soft Goods tool in the Spotlight toolset. Using the Corner Vertex mode, click once on the upper left corner of the table. Then move your cursor down to the bottom left corner and use the snap loop to zoom in. Acquire two smart points at the arc end points and using the extension lines, find their intersection point. When the Align H, Align V smart cursor cue appears, click again. Now move over the bottom right corner and repeat the previous process to find the intersection point and click a third time. Finally, double click at the top right corner to place the soft goods object. In the Object Info palette, under the Shape tab, set the function to border and the height to 2 feet 5 inches. Now switch to a right isometric view and render in OpenGL to review the changes. Click the Exit Symbol button, double click on the Table Symbol again, and this time choose 2D Component and click Edit. Select the rounded rectangle and in the Attributes palette, set the fill color to color by class. Again, click the exit symbol button. Now check the object info palette to see the current name for this table. Locate this symbol in the resource browser and rename it to 6 by 2.5 classroom table. Click the exit symbol button again. And finally, rename the overall symbol to classroom seating table and chairs. Now, let's edit the exhibit table and chair symbol. We will give this table a border as well. Use the flyover tool to center your view over the Paris foyer. Double click on one of the exhibit table and chair symbols and choose 3D component, then click edit. Then double click on the chair symbol and edit the 3D component. Again, select both the seat and the back of the chair if you have RenderWorks, set the Texture to Class Texture in the Render tab of the Object Info palette. In the Attributes palette, set the Color to Color by Class, and then click Exit Symbol. Next, double-click on the Table Symbol and edit the 3D component. Again, if you have RenderWorks, set the Texture to Class Texture, and then set the Fill Color to Color by Class. Switch to a Top Plan view and use the same procedure as before to add a border to the front of this table. Click the Exit Symbol button. Now edit the 2D component and set the fill color of the rounded rectangle to color by class as well. Finally, click the Exit Symbol button twice to exit these symbols. Now let's go ahead and edit the slabs for the ballroom in the foyer. In order to adjust the attributes for the slab, we need to edit their components. First, center your view on the ballroom. Now use the Select Similar tool from the Basic palette to select both of the slabs. In the Object Info palette, click on the Components button, select the first component, and then click Edit. In the Slab Component Settings dialog, set the class to Object Class, then set the fill color to color by class and the texture to class texture. Click OK and then OK again. If you check the object info palette, you'll see that the slabs are in the floor class. So go ahead and open up the organization dialog, select the floor class and click edit. Now let's set the fill color to a cool gray 45% color. Then go ahead and click the color again and now we're going to click on the standard color picker button and we're going to adjust the color slightly to make it a little bit more blue. Click OK. Then if you have RenderWorks, click on the other tab, enable the texture surface hatch option and click on the texture thumbnail. Choose the carpet low pile 03 blue RT texture, then click OK and OK again to exit the organization dialog. Next, we're going to go ahead and use the Create Views command from the Event Design menu. This command will create two sheet layers and place a Plan viewport and a Rendered 3D viewport on those sheet layers. Start by switching to a Top Plan view. 
Now go to the Event Design menu and choose Create Views. Click the Fit to Objects button in the view bar to center the view on the newly created viewport. Go to the Navigation palette and click on the third tab. This is the Sheet Layers tab. You will see we now have two sheet layers, Plan View and Rendered View. Currently, the Rendered View sheet layer is active. Click the Update button in the Object Info palette under the Shape tab to render this viewport. You will notice the viewport is much larger than our page area. So let's go to the Tools menu and then choose Organization. Now we're going to switch to the Sheet Layers tab, and with the Rendered View Sheet selected, click Edit. In the Edit Sheet Layers dialog, click the Page Setup button. Under the Printable area, enable Choose Size Unavailable in Printer Setup, then choose a US Arc C page size from the list, and then click OK. Set the Raster Render DPI to 150, and then click OK. Click OK again to exit the Organization dialog. Finally, Let's adjust the scale for this viewport. In the Object Info palette, scroll down and click on the Scale pop-up menu, and then choose 8th inch equals 1 foot from the list. Next, we will adjust the render settings for this viewport. Again, in the Object Info palette, click on the Background Render Settings button. In the OpenGL Options dialog, choose Very High for Detail, and then click OK. Now click the Update button. The viewport will update with our new render settings. Now let's go ahead and add a foreground hidden line render. Click on the foreground render pop-up menu and then choose hidden line. Now click update again. Next we will use the sheet border tool from the Dims and Notes toolset to add a title block to this sheet. Switch to the Dims and Notes toolset in the toolsets palette, then activate the sheet border tool. Click on the preferences button in the toolbar. Make sure the Fit to Page option is set for the sheet size, then click on the Title Block button. In the Default Symbol folder, click on the Symbols thumbnail and choose the Spotlight Simple Title Block. Then click OK and OK again. Now double click anywhere on this sheet to place the sheet border. With the sheet border selected, scroll down in the Object Info palette and uncheck the Show Grids option. Then click on the Border Settings button. For the margins, set all sides to 0.25 inches, and then click OK. Now click on the Edit Title Block button in the Object Info palette. Name the show Vectorworks Design Summit. Change reference to A-1. Enter your name for Drawn By. Enter today's date. Then for the CAD file name, enter designsummit.vwx. Now click OK. Finally, click and drag the viewport to center it on the page. Now let's edit the Plan View viewport. Before switching to the Plan View sheet, use the Control or Option Click Drag method to duplicate the sheet border. With the duplicated sheet border selected, go to the Object Info palette, click on the Layers button, and choose the Plan View sheet layer. Now in the Navigation palette, make the Plan View sheet layer active. You will see the copied sheet border was moved to this sheet. Now let's adjust the page size for this sheet. Using the same procedure as before, change the page size to US Arc C and set a raster render DPI of 150. Then set the scale of the plan viewport to 8th inch equals 1 foot. Now let's go ahead and rotate the viewport so it fits on the page better. With the viewport selected, use the Control L or Command L shortcut to rotate the viewport. Now center the viewport on the sheet. Finally, let's turn on the presentation seating for this viewport. In the Object Info palette, click on the Classes button, set the Seating-Classroom class to Invisible, and the Seating-Presentation class to Visible. Next, we're going to go ahead and duplicate the Plan View sheet, and then create two Seating Plan viewports. In the Navigation palette, under the Sheet Layers tab, right-click or Control-click on the Plan View sheet layer, Choose Duplicate, right-click or Control-click on the new sheet layer, and choose Edit. Change the sheet name to Seating Plan. Now let's go ahead and adjust the rotation of the viewport and crop out the foyer. First, select the viewport, and in the Object Info palette, set the rotation to 0 degrees. Next, double-click on the viewport. In the Edit Viewport dialog, choose Crop, and then click OK. 
In the edit crop view, activate the rectangle tool and now draw a rectangle over the Paris ballroom as shown. Click Exit Viewport Crop. We now have a viewport showing the presentation seating plan. Let's go ahead and duplicate this viewport now and adjust the class visibility settings to show the classroom seating. Using the Control or Option Click Drag method, duplicate the viewport. With the duplicated viewport selected, go to the Object Info Palette and click on the Classes button. Set the Seating Classroom class to Visible and the Seating Presentation class to Invisible. Click OK. Now center these two viewports on the sheet. The duplicated viewport now displays the classroom seating. Finally, we will add a seating count worksheet to this sheet. In the resource browser, scroll down and locate the seating count worksheet. This worksheet was generated automatically when we created the first seating layout. Click and drag the seating count worksheet onto the sheet and then place it to the left of the title block. If the worksheet appears with a black fill color, go to the Attributes palette and change the fill color to white. Zoom in on the worksheet. You'll notice the worksheet does not show the correct symbol names for our chairs and tables. This is because we renamed the symbols after placing the seating layout. In the view bar, click on the Layer pop-up menu and choose Main Event Room. Select the Classroom Seating Layout, scroll down in the Object Info palette and click on the Select Symbol button. Choose the top level symbol folder, click on the symbol's thumbnail, and select the classroom seating table and chairs symbol. Click OK. This will update the seating layout with a new symbol. Now turn on the seating presentation class and repeat this process for the three presentation seating layouts. Choose the presentation seating chair symbol for these layouts. Now let's give each of these seating layouts a unique name. Select the Stage Left Seating Layout, and in the Object Info Palette, change the section name to Presentation Seating-Left. Now select the Center Stage Seating Layout, and change the name to Presentation Seating-Center. Finally, choose the Stage Right Seating Layout, and name it Presentation Seating-Right. Switch back to the Seating Plan Sheet layer. Double-click on the Seating Count Worksheet, in the Worksheet Edit window, click on the File menu and now choose Recalculate to update this worksheet. You can then go ahead and increase the width of Column B to show the entire seat name and then close the Worksheet Edit window. 